zooms by in a flash. And that's why it's always great to pause and take a look back at how far we have come. So before you and I start talking, before our conversations today, I want us to take a look back at how Deborah Pamzat and Ruth Okorocha made it here. It's the road to the I Beg to Differ finals. For both of our I Beg to Differ finalists, the road here began with defeat. Ruth Okorocha, I just want to say thank you very much. Well done. Ruth Okorocha competed in the first I Beg to Differ, but lost in the very first round. But Deborah Pamzat's defeat was at an even earlier stage. In the February auditions, she did not make the top 14. But both debaters refused to lose. Certain maximum age limit for elective offices is an infringement on the fundamental human rights. Deborah had to battle in the playoffs for a chance at the big dance. Deborah Pamzat, congratulations, you are in the live debates next week. Ruth dusted herself off and tried again this year. A staff is assigned to about 50 clients. I have to stand on a long queue to wait for you. Back on the road to the final, both students defeated opponent. A handful of delegates. After opponent. The ability to back wherever and however you want. After opponent. They are educated, they are literate, they know what they are doing. But the road to the final is never easy. And for both of them, it came with a drive through controversy. We have a tie. Ramadan, your road to one million naira ends here. I was actually rooting for my boy. Deborah was my favorite. Right? But mm. Ramadan is supposed to be the winner. What are you? Are you kidding me? This is unacceptable, man. No. To be honest with you, I listen so carefully. Mm. The boy won. But champions are born in controversy and adversity. And both of them kept driving forward. According to the thesis of Frankel 1999, it says that when a country faces too much internal disturbance, it might want to peg this currency. And now, the only checkpoint on Ruth and Deborah's road to one million Naira is Deborah and Ruth. Thursday at four, it's the end of the road. Ruth Okorocha. When in digital bank, whenever you put a call across to your customer service. Deborah Pamzat. And the nation could retaliate. They can no longer sell their goods and food. One winner. One million naira. This tournament is brought to you in partnership with Space Tag, supported by Printivo, RLG Communications, Just Food, and Obiwizi.com. I've got goosebumps. Wow. It's been an amazing journey for these kids and for all of them who are watching us. We met 16 amazing kids and for each one who had to go home, it really broke my heart. It felt like it was one of my children <laughs> who were leaving the competition. You know, it's really hard because off air, I'm gisting with them. I'm getting to know them. We're playing. I'm cheering them on. On, on air, I have to be this moderator who has no skin in the game whatsoever. It's always difficult, but it's been great and I have loved every second of it and i'm grateful that it's back in may mm -hmm. it's back in may we already have our top 18 raring to go uh for the tournaments in may and we're also going to have a tournament in august here in lagos we'll have one in abuja we'll have one in uh, port harcourt and then we'll have a tournament of champions at the end of the year are you excited i am i beg to differ big this year <laughs> we go here around lagos let's talk let's start the conversation i want to know who you think will win the third place debate and the final also who you are personally rooting for 0700993993993 if you're a woman call us on 01465-7190 01465-7190 but before i take your calls we have to hear from our sponsors because again we cannot be doing this without our sponsors paystack is our headline sponsor we have um, support from obweezy.com obweezy.com will be giving the winner of this tournament a laptop an hp laptop uh, they'll also give the second place winner an iPhone and the third place winner gets a JBL flip portable speaker. And we have four tablets from RLG Communications. RLG Communications is giving four tablets to the four of uh, semi-finalists, the final four. And uh, RLG Communications uh, are manufacturers. They're original equipment manufacturers. They're based in Elisha, you know, Shun State. And the, the gentleman called me uh, when we were doing the tournament live and he said, look, Sandra... I want to be a part of this. I want to reward these children. I want to give them fit for purpose gifts. So please, how can I plug in? And we cannot thank him enough to sing Ilesami. Thank you so much for doing this with us. And we cannot, of course, forget Just Food. Just Food makes Just Delight ice cream, Comel cones. If you see them in the supermarket, grab one because they 
kept our children refreshed. You know, you do a debate and you win, you want a reward. You do a debate and you lose, you want some refreshment and consolation. And Just Food provided that for us. We thank them so much. Let's not forget Printivo. Printivo has made sure that the children who are debating in this tournament, in the tournament in March and the tournament at the end of the year, all receive goodie bags courtesy of Printivo. Look, you want Printivo to print a human being for you? Check them out. I'm sure they, they have, you know, specifications. I'm joking. Please don't take me seriously. Uh, they probably can't print human beings. Or maybe they can. I don't know. <laughs> call them and give them a <laughs> give them a call and ask them. They'll let you know for themselves. Thank you to Printivo. Thank you to obbyweezy.com. Thank you to RLG Communications. And thank you to Just Food. Our headline sponsor, Paystack, is also giving the first two people um, Chromebooks. So the winner of one millionaire gets a, an HP laptop and a Chromebook, and the second place winner wins um, that Chromebook from Paystack as well as uh, an iPhone from obiwizi.com. All right, that said, let's take a break. When we come back, I'll take your calls. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. Don't go away. Do you have a growing business or an exciting idea for one? Take your business to the next level with Paystack. Paystack helps you accept. started. Again, she was a playoff candidate and she faced off Organetano Romina. Here is how that particular debate went down. Hey, the listeners, the late um, moderator, panel of judges, our career timekeeper, my lovely fellow debater. My name is Romina Organetano and I'm here to support the motion which says that there should be a maximum age for elective posts. Um, for, let me start by saying that the in the civil service, there is a maximum age, which is 65, which is 65 for, um, which is 65 for members that are, oh my God, I'm so nervous. <sighs> okay. Good day, um, my Jesus Christ, please, everybody. I'm so nervous. What, what do I do? You relax, you breathe, and you keep going. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm so here to support the motion which states that there should be a maximum age for, for elective posts. Now, let me start by saying that there could be persons who, who no longer possess the skills, the multitasking skills required of, of people that take part in the presidential or governorship post. They should not be allowed to believe I'm actually doing this. Relax, you've got it. Just breathe. You've still got time. Really? I don't think so. You've got one minute. You can do a lot in one minute. Try again. I can't. You can't? I can't. Are you forfeiting? No. Okay. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a little break. And then uh, she'll get some time to cool off uh, and to calm down and to take a deep breath. And then we'll come back and we'll try again. Lagos, you're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. We took that break and we tried to buy her some time to, you know, just regain herself, regain some confidence, you know. Um, it was, uh, <laughs> it didn't work out. It didn't work out. Let me remind you how it went when we came back from the break. 
panel of judges, our current timekeeper, my fellow debater. My name is Romina Ogunetano, and I'm here to support the motion, which states that there should be a maximum age for elective positions in Nigeria. Now, decrepit persons who no longer possess the multitasking skills required of a presidential or an, a governor may find it difficult to, to perform their task. Just like our president, who is 75 years of age, was hospitalized twice during his, during his hegemony. The f most of, majority of his first tenure was spent in hospitals in London rather than in the country performing his duties as the president. Also, also in addition to that, Okay, youth in um, there should be a maximum age for there should be a maximum age for um elective positions because the youth are required to be involved in the decision making processes of the country process of the country. So if the youth are not properly involved, it will bring about a a lower. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ogene Tano. And now let's move to Deborah Pamzat, who looks ready and raring to go. Deborah, your time starts now. Sis age does not determine input or the quality of what you want to deliver. It therefore starts to reason that there should be no maximum age limit for elective officers. Good evening, the moderator, panel of judges, accurate timekeeper, co-debater, and the ever-attentive audience. I'm Deborah Pamzat of Lagos State Model Senior College, Kankobadagri, Education District 5. I am here to oppose the proposition which states that there should be maximum age limit for elected officers. The College English Dictionary defines an elected office as the post to which people are appointed as a result of winning an election. Examples of elected officers are the president of a country, the governor of a state, the representative of a constituency, among many others. I vehemently believe that there should be no maximum age limit for elective officers. Why? First, setting maximum age limit for elective officers is an infringement on the fundamental human rights of political aspirants to freely associate and engage in all activities in response to their needs and wants, be it in politics or in any other legitimate engagement. Second, the rigidity and conservation associated with maximum age limits will exclude proactive, versatile, and patriotic citizens not within the statutory elective age bracket, from contributing their quota to the development of the nation. Again, the track record of, of America's president, Joe Biden, a septuagenarian, and those of other older political leaders across the globe, justifies my stance that there should be no political, that there should be no maximum age limit for elective offices. Again, pan besides, panel of judges, you will agree with me that Elderly people command natural respect in a conventional African society, partly because of their experience, as opposed to the youthful exuberance of many young adults that does not match up to the experience of the elderly, which is an essential quality for public office holders. Moreover, apart from limiting the level of political participation, proponents of the not-too-young-to-rule idea should not forget that the act of governance is a very, very serious business that cannot be left in the hands of the youth because of its intricate nature. In conclusion, panel of judges, a public office order requires intelligence to lead a complex nation like Nigeria. And if intelligence, which comprises memory, reasoning, and problem-solving, according to Alfred Bynit, a French psychologist and lawyer, are characters transmitted through genes from parents to children and from one generation to another without any alteration. Placing a maximum age limit will exclude an altruistic generation from contributing meaningfully to the governance. Panel of judges, I strongly believe that there should be no maximum age limit for elective offices. Thank you. 
I'll be back. She said that I'll be back and she was back and she kept coming back until now she's in the finals. Lagos, did you catch that very first debate uh, between uh, Tano and um, Deborah Pamzat during the playoffs? This was a playoffs. She won this playoffs and she gave us quite a show this tournament. 0700-993-993-993-01465-7190. Hello, thank you very much for calling us. I'm Sandra. Good to have you on the show, sir. Yes, Mr. Frank. Mr. Frank, welcome. In Pepper, I'm seeing that the Black Panzer and the Muruto Korata, mm. then totally will be the guy. Okay. I have. But, Mr. Sandra, permit me to make one comment. Okay. Um, I, I, how possible it is that maybe by next and they will do this thing by men. Hmm. Let it be only men. Then next upper one, let it be only women. That's not going to happen. Because the way I'm saying this thing, if you continue like this now, hmm. from now to the next 10 years, mm -hmm. no man is going to win this thing. That, yeah, uh, uh, why are you selling men short? No, because I, I'm not selling them short like that because last year it happened. This year now it, it happened. And, and, I and, so, and, and so what you, you want... Run, and yes, so man. and so, what you want is for us to say only men, only women. Why? Why should we uh -huh. do that? Let them know, uh, so that when you reach your final, anybody is, can contact you. Guys. This is not all boys' station or all girls' station. This okay. is station I for remember everybody. Remember now, you, there is one... Frank, thank you very much for calling. 99.3, hello. <laughs> <laughs> now, wow. <laughs> Good afternoon, Masadio. Good afternoon. It's just the last name? comment that makes me laugh. So sorry, I've seen it for my No, day. it's okay. <laughs> Welcome. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, uh, these two, uh, Ruth and Deb, two of them, hmm. for me, two of them should just take one, one, one reason because they are too powerful. <laughs> you know? In fact, they are too powerful. They are. I, don't, I, I, I cannot even say is this one. Or this one. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to select. Oh, call us back if you can. 99.3, hello. Hello, Madam Sandra. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. What's your name? I'm Antina from Iju Road. Welcome. Go ahead. I want to oppose that man that just called now. Okay. <laughs> and the reason is because now I called the voice to say that the boy should wake up. This is this this debate. Is a medium for the boys to wake up. I'm a teacher. I know what we are seeing in classrooms. Okay. So the boys should wake up. They should stop watching films and games. They should stop playing games and read. They can actually do better than the girls. But they should wake up. Okay. So there's nothing like boys alone, girls alone. No. Okay. So it's a wake-up call for the boys that they should please rise up and take up their responsibilities. Okay. All right. Thank you for calling us. 99.3. Hello. Hello. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Tunde. Welcome. Welcome, Tunde. You know, you know what baffles me in this program is that mm. since you said uh, Deborah Pamsa was speak, was the last person who was speaking, mm. as I stand you. Mm. You know, the, 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 I'm very, very fearful. That's why I'm the, I'm the first of the boys. Okay. Look at what happened. Anybody that, say, anybody that took us last Standing mm. to qualify. Fear those guys. I don't get away, boy. Mm. You, 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 you can slow down the bra. Mm. He said he will be back and he will be back to the final. Nobody <laughs> can defeat him in the final. <laughs> so that is why I'm fearful of that guy. That's why I'm the first of the guys. Mm. So thank you. Congratulations to her. Uh, if you win and you support anybody that wins, I'm very encouraged to each other. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Let me take you back to the first time that we met Ruth Okorocha. Ruth Okorocha was a firecracker. Her first debate was on the topic, will artificial intelligence um, be a net positive for humanity? And let me tell you, that debate was fantastic. 16 seconds school students made the cut. Sorry about that. People are trying to call us via Skype. I wish that they would not call us via Skype so that we can actually talk to these kids. Job means joining us. I don't know why, but everybody calm down. Please stop calling us. Stop calling us. Thank you very much. Emerging technologies, which tries to simulate human reasoning in AI systems. Artificial intelligence, of course, will help greatly in minimizing human errors. 
like they say, no man is above mistake. How about making use of tools that do not make mistake, if programmed correctly? These tools will also be available for use 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Unlike humans, AI system can work for hours and days without getting tired, stressed or bored. Life is full of risk, but how many are willing to take this risk? Just a few. And some risk can be taken because it leads to the death of that individual. But AI devices do not fear risk. They can't die, neither can they get hurt. And they'll complete tasks perfectly that normally humans can't complete because of the danger attached to it. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the infection rate was one of the greatest challenges faced worldwide. Many people, when they get infected and are admitted to the hospital, it becomes a 50-50 scenario that the doctor or medical personnel that treats him or her would also get infected. But Rwanda found a solution to this problem with the aid of AI devices. Robots treated humans at a faster rate, and it minimized the infection rates. Even in a country like ours, where we lack medical personnel, AI devices will be a great aid. A robot can perform a duty that 1,000 humans are expected to perform. You are allowed to wow at the gap. It would also help to sort out mysterious and confusing cases. Some cases take years to sort out, but with the aid of AI devices, these cases can be sorted out in a shorter period of time, thereby reducing crime and criminal activities in the world. It should also bring about straightforward and transparent governments because political officials can commit crime and go free. They can bribe humans, but AI devices can't be bribed. I'm sure our good Nigerian citizens will deserve such governance system where there will be no need to argue about confusing matters in government. Neither will there be behind the scene activities because everything will be crystal clear with the aid of the speed and efficiency of artificial intelligence. With this point of mind, I hope you've been convinced and not confused that artificial intelligence will be a net positive for humanity. Thank you. Can you believe that she lost that match? She did. She lost that match. That was the very first knockout round uh, where we met Ruth Okorocha in 2021, November 2021. You can watch that debate on our YouTube and our Facebook. And she lost to Chia Gozi. But she came back this year and she fought and she fought and she fought. And tomorrow... We're going to watch her debate Deborah Pamzat in the final. What a story. 99.3. Hello. Hello. Thanks for calling. What's your name, sir? My name is Shegun. Shegun, welcome. Yeah. First of all, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you. I must commend you. Thank you. Now, secondly, a, a young man raised an issue that you should, um, you know, compartmentalize it into male and female things. Hmm. But you see, I want you to look at it from this angle. I think we have a social problem with our educational system okay. that is affecting the male child adversely, like one of the teachers said. Mm. And I think you should just maybe co up a social scientist into the system and like try to see how you can solve this, solve this problem. Because you know what? Most of the boy child now, most of the male child mm. children or students or what you call it now, mm -hmm. have redirected their focus into... You know, the very stupid things like the Davidos, the whiskey, the, all those stuff of this world. Nobody cares to acquire knowledge. Mm. Guess what? The, ma the female child will probably sit at the TV, probably be the one watching Ukraine and one of you fight. The boys are checking out all these stupid things on net. So we have a social problem that we have to look at closely. Okay. And I think that is one thing this program of yours should address. And it would be nice if you can go that direction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Shagun, for calling. Unfortunately, this is a debate tournament, and it's a debate tournament for students who can debate. We're not a school. We're not a child education uh, organization. We're not a child development uh, organization. We are a radio station that talks. Our slogan is Let's Talk. And we want to hear from the future listeners of Nigeria Info. We want to hear from them today. That's why this debate has been organized. And that's why we leave the room open. Last year, the complaint was, oh, you don't have uh, uh, public school students in the debate. Only private school. Why? Uh, and I said at that time, well, the announcement is live on air on Cool FM, on Wazir FM, on Nigeria Info. Everybody is invited. We're not selecting private over public. This year, the complaint is no, more girls are represented than the boys. Again, not the fault of the tournament. It's that we had way more girls who applied than boys. And so it makes sense that you're going to have more uh, girls represented um, um, in the tournament. So I don't think the solution is to ask us 
as Nigeria Info to start doing child education, development things, even though we have some of those programs over the weekend with Onyechi Ekuma and Kama, I think the solution is as you listen to us as the Nigerian society, as Lagos, as you're listening to us, you're looking at all the gaps and you yourself, just like Sandra Isaacosi woke up one day and said, you know what, I want to organize a debate for teenagers. I want to prepare them to start paying attention to world um uh, events, to current affairs, to, to philosophy, to things like that. You qua, look at a problem and say, let me solve it. Boys are not paying attention, but girls are paying attention. Let me come and be a mentor for young boys. As, an, as a grown man, you start a, uh, there's something Americans did. It's called uh, uh, Big Brother, I believe, but not the Big Brother Niger. So you have, they have a Big Brother system where older men who are doing well, and you're not, doing well is not even rich. Doing well is just working, gone through school, have a bit of knowledge, you adopt a young man, you start mentoring him, start teaching him how to be a proper man. You can do that for yourself, you know? But what we're doing here on Nigeria Info is a debate tournament for teenagers who think that they have what it takes to debate their way to one million naira. Let's meet uh, Oladi Kupo Ramadan. So you've met the first two uh, finalists, Ruth Okorocha, and Deborah Pamsat. Now let's meet the people who will uh, play uh, the third place match tomorrow. Uh, we uh, we will have Andrela Nadi and we'll have Oladik Bukwa Ramadan. This was where we met Ramadan for the very first time on this show. And let me tell you, it was fantastic. It really was. Gentlemen, beginning her debate about remote work improving the business world is Antonio Abigail Olua Dimimu. <laughs> Your time starts now. Good day, moderator, panel of judges, accurate timekeeper, fellow debaters, and my ever attentive audience. I am Antonio Olua Dimimu from Princeton College Tiriliri, and I'm here to support the motion which says remote work has improved the business world. Remote work is a trend that isn't going to slow down soon. It has to do with working from a place which is necessarily not your normal office workspace. It could be working from your home, from your personal workspace, or from your favorite spots. This became the new normal during the COVID-19 lockdown, and lots of employees were forced to adapt to this mode of working because they had to get their jobs done at all costs, and there were lots of restrictions to movements. During this period, it was noticed that less commuting time had a positive impact on our environment because there was no pollution, congestion, traffic, and there was less emission of greenhouse gases, which created a safer environment for people to live in. Also, commuting takes a lot of time, energy, and effort, which could be spent much more productively. The man hours spent from your house to your workplace every morning was removed. Hence, employees didn't have to spend much on transport, fee, fuel, and all sorts. They were able to save more money, they were able to start their activities much more earlier. They, this prevented lateness. They were well rested before starting their day-to-day -day activities and all these enhanced productivity. Also, the overhead cost of production of lots of firms and organizations was reduced. Why? Because they didn't have to spend much on cost of accommodation, feeding, transport, travel cost reimbursements, and all sorts. They were able to maximize their profits and also invest more money into smooth running of the organization. Remote working, while working remotely, there are no office distractions, such as interruptions from your co-workers, unimportant meetings, casual phone calls, and all sorts. You are able to channel your energy into working smoothly, and all these aid productivity. While working remotely, you are able to have flexible conditions of working. You can balance your personal life and your work life. All these help to enhance time management skills and all sorts. This also help in improving a person's well-being. While working remotely, you are able to channel your energy into working smoothly and also you can adjust your work into your biological rhythm and level of energy that suits you. Working remotely also, you can create a comfortable workspace for yourself in your house where, you're, where you are comfortable, you can get a bigger chair, if you have health issues, you can get special office equipment which will aid productivity. There are lots of po false positives that, oh, when a person goes to work in the morning and they come back home, They've done a lot and all sorts. But I can tell you, performance is what matters. Efficiency, focus, determination, discipline. This is what enhances productivity. This is what aids productivity. This is what aids development. So I'll tell you, I hope I was able to convince you, each and every one of you, including my opponents, that remote working has improved the business world. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where you work, when you work, 
or what you do. It determines what all the determinants are if you're efficient. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. Antonio there, brilliant work, scored so highly, but none of us were ready for Oladi Kupo Ramadan. Ah, Olali Kong came in and he knocked us out the park. What I love the most about this young man is how unassuming he is. You know, you never expect what's going to come out of his mouth, but then he comes out and you are in awe of what he does. Let's meet Olua. Uh, oh, sorry, Oladi Kukwo, Ramadan, Olami Lekong. Without a post, but today he'll be opposing that remote work has improved the business world. Ramadan, your time starts now. Once upon a time, the business world thrived and flourished. But with the advent of remote work, the unfortunate opposite has been the case. What I'm about to reveal in this debate is absolutely shocking. The remote work is indeed a wolf in sheep's clothing. It presents itself as seemingly advantageous, but in reality, the disadvantages it has on the business world greatly outweighs whatever benefits it might have. No one passes by a royal family without paying obeisance, so I would like to give my respect to whom it is due. But as I say good day, Madam Moderator, my esteemed panel of judges, my accurate timekeeper, my disputant co debater, and my ever attentive audience. I'm Oladi Ramadan Oladiko, I'm 15, and I'm from Federal Government College, Ijani King Lagos. I'm here to present my views and strongly oppose the motion which says that remote work has improved the business world. Without further ado, I'll go straight to my points. Firstly, remote work has led to increased cybersecurity concerns like data breaches and ransomware attacks. In the year 2020, the remote work system became very, very prominent due to the COVID-19 outbreak, which forced all employees to adapt to a remote work system. This has led to increased data breaches because the computers used for remote work are personal computers which lack advanced security measures and creates a loophole for hackers to have access to confidential office information. This is evident in the number of data breaches recorded in the year 2020. 1,862 data breaches were recorded, quadrupling the amount of data breaches in recent years without the advent of remote work. Ransomware attacks and malware attacks have also been on an increase. So ransomware is basically a program that blocks off two remote computers and then the programmers demand ransom from a company before they restore this access. Ransomware attacks cost the business world an insane $5.2 billion in the year 2020. Only 715 million companies were affected. In other words, every single second in the year 2020, 22 companies went into to downtime as a result of ransomware attacks. And yet you say remote work has improved the business world? Hmm, I wonder. But I'll go to my next point. Remote work has led to increased expenditure. Every, uh, everybody here agrees with me that for the business world to thrive, it has to cut down on all unnecessary expenditure. But with the advent of remote work, gratuitous expenditure like internet cost, tech support, and video conferencing platform subscriptions are inevitable. This has cost the business world an insane $12 billion. This $12 billion is enough to set up 10 oil refineries, 200 banks, 100 aviation companies, and 10 car manufacturing plants. But all this money gone due to remote work. And my opponent still says remote work has improved the business world. But I'll move on. Distractions dominate the remote work system. According to Yava Sigao, distraction is a big enemy of the business world. And it's winning. We are losing big time, my friend. We're losing time and we're losing money. Yavan Singao examined the distractions level when working remotely in comparison to the distractions level when working in an office space. The distraction level triples. This means the business world loses triple the amount they lose when you work in, in an office. So on analysis, 6.2 million naira is being lost every single second due to distractions in the workplace. Recapitulating on all these facts and figures, it is crystal clear that remote work system has not improved the business world. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank. This was the first time we met uh, Ramadan and uh, he went on to win that match. He won his quarterfinal match as well into the semifinals and now he's going to be playing for third place tomorrow at 3 p.m. Lagos will take a break. When we come back, we'll take your calls. You're listening to I Beg to Differ on 99.3 Nigeria Info. We're looking back at the second edition of this tournament. Who are you rooting for in the I Beg to Differ final? I'm Sandra Ezekwesli, S. Ezekwesli on social media. Sandra Ezekwesli everywhere. Don't go away. Do you have a growing business or an exciting idea for one? 
Take your business to the next level with Paystack. Paystack helps you accept payments online from anyone, anywhere in the world. And... Nine three zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three. All four of our remaining contestants won their quarterfinal matches. That's how they made it this far. Uh, let's see who's on the line. Ninety nine point three. Hello. 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 Thanks for calling. What's your name, ma'am? Hello. 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 Can, can you hear me? Hello. Oh no, network there. Ninety nine point three. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name, ma'am? My name is Onyeka. Sandra, do you know I didn't listen to this very one you played now? Eh? I didn't listen to it so because now that the people were complaining, mm. my heart was breaking. But you know, because we must move forward, and in every arrangement, there must be a loser and a winner. I just heard myself when I listened to this boy girl. It's no cool if I have one million naira for sign and go that boy. Kineke. Yeah, but he'll be back now. He'll be back at the end I of know, the year. I know you've done well. You've done well. You really handled the situation. God bless you. Thank you. Well done. Thank well you. done. <laughs> Hello. 99.3. Hello. Hello. Um, good evening. Good evening. What's your name, sir? Yes, my name is Kelly. Kelly, welcome. Kelly in Bagada. Oh, oh. my God. Hmm. Ramadan is in season. Mm -hmm. ah! It's giving me give, give goosebumps mm -hmm. all over. Mm -hmm. But quickly, I, 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 I am concerned eh, mm -hmm. the way some people say things on this phone. Okay. How can somebody come out and start saying they should separate boys from girls? I don't understand. Is it not encouraging put, bringing them together and let the guys know that the ladies are doing well? Why not them also come and do well? Mm. Anyway, I see this lady winning the final. Um, this Ruto Korocha. Okay. Ruto Korocha. Ruto Korocha. Ruto Korocha. That, with that girl in the third place. That guy is too good. Okay. He with, uh, he with that lady in the third place. And uh, Sandra, mm. you are doing a fantastic job. And I also love the way you manage the situation. Thank you. God will continue to bless you with more wisdom. <laughs> bless you as well. Thank you very much for calling. We've got TA. TA has been trying to call for a while. Hi, TA. Uh, hello, Sandra. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Where are you calling us from, TA? I'm calling from Finland. I was about to fight you. That why are you not picking my call for God's sake? Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Welcome. Because, <laughs> for the for the whole of the debate, you have been picking my brother's call. That's Kindy. Oh. And I was also been calling, but you don't pick my call. I was sorry. like, what's, what's happening? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, just some fun fact. Mm -hmm. On the day Deborah and. Um, uh, Ramadan was debating. Mm. My brother and I were also debating because I was rooting for Deborah oh. and he was rooting for Ramadan. Okay. So <laughs> at uh, at the uh, first and the second session, mm. I told my brother that those two guys mm. are on par right mm. now. Mm. That what is going to separate them will mm. be the third third round, third and final right. presentation. Right. It was. It was at that final presentation I felt okay, Ramadan won. Okay. Because even though I was supporting Deborah, I was that thought that the way that guy finished the point of of Deborah, mm. by, uh, it, it was just too much for mm. me. I said, ah, let's give it to Ramadan. But anyway, Deborah is in the final. I'm still going to be rooting for her <laughs> that she wins. Okay. Because I like her the way you know, I'm Deborah, bam, that. I'll be back. <laughs> I, I, I so much love the way she calls her name. <laughs> so, so bold. But you are doing a good job. We are, we are hoping, we are hoping that this continues for a long time. We hope so. And uh, so that Nigerians will begin to learn from all this and 
we will have a better nation mm. in, our, in, our, in our hands. Thank you for the work and God bless you. Bless you as well, TA. Thank you very much for calling. In my house, we call Deborah Terminator because she says, I'll be back. We've got Angela on the line. Hi, Angela. Sorry about that, Angela. Call back if you can. Hello. Good evening. Hello, Sanja. How you doing? Good evening. Good evening. What's Good your evening, name, ma'am? My name is Esther. Esther, welcome. Thank you. Mm. Oh, I really feel for Ramadan. Mm. The first time I heard this voice, oh, I felt good for my body. <laughs> like, I love this guy's voice. And going on to listen to what he said was fact. Mm. I really enjoyed every uh, debate he has had so far. Sandra, mm? that day when he lost to Deborah, mm. oh God, I felt like I was cheated. <laughs> I just put off my, my radio. I said, oh, no, this is not supposed to be. Aww. But yesterday I just said, well, these are children. What are we going to do? Yeah. We just have to encourage them. Yeah. I really appreciate the way you can do the situation. And in fact, I'm looking forward to the final. When it's going to come, mm-hmm. I, I mean the end of the year, mm-hmm. I want to see the people he's going to face. And well, he'll face all the champions. Face. So all the champions yes. will have from Lagos, Port Harcourt, Abuja, he'll face them. So Yes, I really want to we'll see, see how he does. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank really you so much for calling. We appreciate it. We've got Nonso on the line. Hi, Nonso. Yeah, Sandra, good evening. Good evening. How are you doing, sir? I'm okay, and you? I'm very well. Okay, Sandra, on a lighter note, mm. um, since uh, your session has a uh, discussion line for the ladies, mm. uh, so I think people also have um, a debate for the men also. Uh, we, so, we, we, also we have line for men and line for women now. We have line for men and line for women. So <laughs> you don't know, say your arguments don't fall now. Ramadan will just finish with your arguments now. So, <laughs> yeah, because, because, of course, that system has no way of uh, filtering costs from male and from female before people created it, they could for females. No, no, so, no. Uh, the, so, the, the reason, well, let's not get into that. Let's focus uh, on the uh, children. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but um, on the discussion, on the issue, on the yeah, discussion about the mm. about the deeper, mm-hmm. it's a great um, one. You're doing a great job there, and I want to appreciate um, your radio station. Thank you. And yourself. For the initiative, thank it's you. Good one. Thank you. And I encourage our boys to. I don't know. I was um, speaking, discussing with my colleague mm. um, two days ago. I said, "Where are our boys?" That's a good said, question. Where are our boys? That's a good if, question. If, um, in my community, we have uh, a scholarship program. Out of the twelve um, beneficiaries, ten are girls. Mm. Where are the boys? This is a very important question that every parent should ask and should be asking. What is happening to our boys? Sandra, enjoy your day. You too. Thank you very much for calling. Now, I have to say, of course, full disclosure, that we had a lot of boys who auditioned for this thing. Again, 243 auditions, right? So we had a lot of boys who auditioned, but we had more girls who auditioned and we had more quality auditions from the girls than from the boys. I think in May, though, we we may I have to look at the list again. We may have um, a more even representation of um, boys in May. I think what also contributed to what happened in March was that we chose only those in SS3 because we don't want them to um, have to study for too many things because YEC happens around May and June, you know, or thereabouts. So we wanted to just do SS3 in March so that in May we'll do those who are in SS2, um, SS1, and JS3, right? Uh, so that's that's also probably, but again, it goes back to the, uh, to the point of, well, we had more girls who are applied you know who auditioned for this and that's why we have more girls represented uh in this edition of the tournament but hopefully the boys are listening and they will come correct during the next auditions the next auditions will be for the tournament in august because we're not going to do fresh fresh auditions for me because we had too many great kids from that 243 that we had to say nah we we have to select some of them to come back uh to come in may and uh you know show us what they have arami day is on the line hi arami day Yes, a happy day. Welcome. Good evening. Good afternoon, Sandra. I really love your show. Thank you. 
I, I, in fact, you guys are really doing a great job. Thank you. Honestly, I must confess, you're doing a great job. Thank I love you. your show. Thank you. I used to listen to Nigeria it's every day, every hour. You guys are wonderful. Thank but you. I want to talk about this guy, Ramadan. Mm-hmm. I need to confess, Ramadan is good. He is. Honestly, the guy is just that he's, he's a cool guy. Hmm. Are you getting me? Mm-hmm. He's a cool guy, but he's just too good. Mm. You need to uh, understand what I'm trying to say. He's good. He's very intellectual. Right. If you listen to all what is coming out from his mouth, you know that, ah, no, it's not about you being lousy or being loud about everything you're saying. This guy is composed. He's so good. Right. Honestly, I need to confess, he's good. He Ramadan is, is good. He but is. I love the way you handle the situation. I love the way you handle it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ramide. To bless you. Bless you as well. Thank you so much for calling. We've got uh, Azu who's calling uh, from Jakarta, I believe. Hi, Azu. Yeah. Sandra, hmm. greetings. Greetings. Um, Go ahead. I'm rooting for Amzat. I, I, she is very, very spontaneous. She's, you know, she has a way of, you know, I think she's built for debate. Right. And the question is, who are you rooting for Amzat? Now, the thing is, people should understand that that you're a good debater and, you know, you're good in debates and the whole stuff doesn't make you the best student or a better student. Right. For those guys, for people saying, oh, guys, uh, they, should, they didn't win. Don't be surprised. I'm just might not be the best in her class. You have two or three guys that are better than her. But in the debate, I give it to her. Mm. That's just my only contribution. All right, Azu, thank you very much for calling to contribute. We've got mm. Daya. We'll talk to Daya, then we'll take Hello, a break. Hello, Sandra. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Daya. Yeah. Well done for Th- the good job. Thank you. I really miss Ramadan. <laughs> Ah, Ramadan is good. The yes. boy is very, very good. He I is. can't wait to hear from him tomorrow. Okay. Yes. All right. And the the very uh, I really appreciate you the way you handle the whole situation. It's Thank very you. very okay. Thank you. Yeah, we go spare our life to witness the end of the year. Amen. Yeah. We'll all be here. All right. We'll all watch it happen. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, I'll keep taking your calls. You're listening to I Beg to Differ. We're looking back at the year. Uh, well, not the year, the month, <laughs> the second edition of this tournament. The first edition was November uh, 2021. This is the second edition. Third edition will be in May. For this edition, uh, we have our four final, uh, our four, our final four. So uh, in the finals, we have Ruth Okrocha and Deborah Pamzat. And in the third place, playing for third place, are Andrella Nadi and Ramadan Olamilekon. I'm Sandra Ezekwesi, your moderator. Don't go away. Hey, 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 you know when I'm here, I've got good news for you. Yes, Paystack helps businesses like yours accept payments online from...
providing swag bags for our kids, all 16 of them in this edition and the edition in May and the edition at the end of the year. Thank you as well to uh, obwc.com. Thank you to RLG Communications and thank you to Just Food for providing Just Delight ice cream, Kamel cones for all our kids. On WhatsApp, uh, uh, Deshino says, Sandra, for those who are clamoring for exclusively male debates because the ones who have featured so far did not make it far. This is to prove to them that no gender is superior to the other. Intelligence, leadership, and any other virtues found in humans. In fact, with the situation we've got so far, female gender is leading. Ramadan is representing us well for crying out loud. We don't need numbers. We need quality. I think those kids are all super good. All right, additional. thanks for your message. Uh, we've got uh, someone who says, Ramadan is the best debater in this year's debate. He towers head and shoulders above the rest of them. The boy is a class act. Uh, we've got someone who says, um, well, we, we're sorry you feel that way. You didn't leave your name, unfortunately, but you have a choice. You can actually, you know, shift. We've got uh, Tosin from Abulegba who says, Sandra, Ramadan is the best debater by a million miles. This competition has witnessed both in the last edition and this present one. Only the judges in that semifinal with Debra can explain why he's not in the final. Sandra, I do not agree that boys are not doing their best to compete or win this debate competition. What happened at the semifinal in the case of uh, Ramadan proves that, uh, well, actually, Shegun, you're lying there. The judges do not want an all-girls affair. You people say the most ridiculous things you know I, i've i've tried my best to you know be nice be kind but you know what let me just keep quiet chief Odo says i'm happy for what nigeria info is doing i give kudos to them but uh, i hope that when the boys will wake up the girls won't start screaming break the bias <laughs> Okay. Hillary says, um, nice job you're doing out there. Thank you so much for the way you handled drama dance issue. I doff my hat uh, for you, Sandra. I missed the debate competitions back then in school. I was always the chief speaker. And I vividly remember the last topic I debated on life in rural areas is more rewarding than life in urban areas. And I was the chief speaker for the proposing team. I really miss it. God bless Nigeria Info. Hillary, I'll be back. <laughs> All right, Hilary. We'll see you in front. Uh, we've got um, someone who says, Sandra Chai. Now, did you be that? Okay. We've got uh, more messages here. Mm. All right. No, no, no. These messages are not for I beg to differ, but thank you very much for your message. Uh, Gwenga says, Sandra, well done. Now we have two uh, girls in the final. Uh, Gwenga, thank you for your message. To the phone lines and see who we can talk to before we have to uh, end today's episode. 99.3, hello. Sorry about that. Call back if you can. 99.3, hello. Hello, Sandra. How are you? This is Alex again. Hi, Alex. Welcome. Sandra, God bless you. Honestly, I don't know how to say. Sandra, I've told you many times on this show that your value to us eh, is more than the value of government. I'm serious. <laughs> okay. So you see all the long things that you said for you that you should go and do because you decided to organize it. <laughs> hmm? No, it's true. You see, Sandra, your value is a lot more than what some governments are doing. We know now they're asking you to go and do some kind of research and go and check out what is happening in the brain of the boys. And you, get, you see, God bless you, Sandra. All right. And I, I want to also say something to those who are saying that it should be a, a show for boys and girls. Let me just be clear about something. The, be, the the more we the more we how do I put this? Hmm. It's good for us to enable I mean to let our children know, right? That the universe, the the way it is, we cannot there's no male universe different from a from a female universe. In the real world, there's no separation between men on one side and women there's no female so I think they should just they should just get to integrate themselves really quickly into the life of today. Don't be looking always to separate themselves. That's why Uncle wants Evil people, Yoruba people, this. That's not how the real world is. Prepare your children for the real world. Sandra, God bless you. Bless you as well. Thank you very much for calling. Let's take another break. When we come back from this break, we'll switch gears and move on to today's Balogun and Broad. Don't go away. Do you have a growing business or an exciting idea for one? Take your business to the next level with Paystack. Paystack.